Okay, hello everybody. Um, today I'm talking to Dmitry Tochilkin. Um, Dmitry is a computer vision researcher and engineer. He's worked at Google, Huawei, Computer Vision Lab and Yandex Self-Driving. Um, his research topics um, were image and video restoration tasks such as um, image video inpainting, super resolution, deblurring, denoising and optical flow. Uh, about seven months ago, he took a leap of faith, left the corporate world to do something he believed in and find his path in AI art. He's mostly interested in animations and video stylation. I, I, I first came across his work on Twitter and I, I was blown away. I've played around with animations myself and I've had loads of problems with like smearing of scenes and pixelization. And as soon as I saw his work, I was just like, this is mind blowing. I want to talk to this guy. Um, like me, he's a, he's a big believer in the democratization um, of filmmaking and animation. Uh, and, it, you know, he wants to introduce a, the, a, a new, you know, lovely way of, of self-expression through video storytelling. OK, now I had Black Label Art Cult on my channel last week and he said that we're probably six to 12 months away from people being able to create amazing 3D movies simply using prompts okay um so i'm going to talk to dimitri we're going to see some of his work and yeah find out what his view is on that so dimitri i've seen some of your work and it's amazing how close do you think we are to like the the average person being able to just generate movies like you do in you know in 3d mm -hmm uh yes uh, uh by the way steve uh, thanks for having me uh yeah i'm a i'm a huge believer in uh, ai filmmaking and i think that uh, we are getting closer to uh democratization of uh, ai storytelling through films through video animations uh, um yeah and uh, i think that we are already in some sense uh getting closer to it uh each month because like for example one year ago uh i would say like the state of the art of the art the thing that uh the people were obsessed about were uh, pytti animations uh, that were based on vqgan and uh we all remember them and uh I mean, comparing to what we are having today with stable diffusion with uh, modern algorithms for animation is just mind blowing. It's it's really hard to compare these two things, and uh, so for me, it's it's very hard to imagine what we'll have one year from here. But we we've already seen some research results from Google, from Facebook, um, from uh, from other uh, AI research laboratories, and they are showing us that uh, text to video is coming, and uh, it's already can um, it already can produce a very coherent, a very uh, diverse results. So currently, we are having only camera rotations right in uh in our um, toolbox but well we also have such things as uh, um prompt uh interpolation like keyword uh interpolation we have 2d and 3d animations but we can't animate objects yet and uh, to be able to tell some story to express it through video you need to make that person uh, in a video for example to come closer to to his dog or um, make that rocket fly uh, uh, towards space and uh, currently we can create almost like 3d worlds and uh, i think my algorithm that i introduced like uh, a week ago um, yeah it uh, it's a little step towards it because uh, previously we had a 3d animation but um, we warped 
space. So it wasn't a real uh, 3D animation algorithm in a sense. Uh, so yeah, I think that we are getting closer each month and uh, I'm, I just think that um, it will be here uh, just before we realize we are here and uh, it will be uh, it will be here very soon i mean we didn't even uh, we haven't even seen uh, some commercial products uh, that were using these algorithms like we've had disk diffusion for almost a year but we didn't see any uh, products surrounding it for animations for videos uh, everybody was just using collab everybody was just using the product of uh, mm, like a dozen of uh, engineer uh, enthusiasts that were uh, creating these algorithms like uh, gandamu like somni uh, like all of the greatest guys uh, uh, that uh, made it possible but i think that it will be widespread um, in the near future. And I think that um, startups will emerge that are doing uh, AI uh, that will allow to make uh, good UI tools for uh, uh, animation, for filmmaking. And it will be completely different from uh, making everything in collab because in collab it's just a nightmare to make all of these animations uh, from scratch to uh, uh, to move uh, mm. the camera just by imagining uh, like how fast do you need to rotate it and how fast do you need to translate it to the right to make it uh, look good. Um, I mean. The research is coming fast, but um, as we will see some uh, good um, UI interfaces, it will be it will be huge. It will it it will be widely adopted because currently we are the enthusiasts that are shaping this industry because uh, not still there are not a lot of people that are doing AI animations, like there are maybe thousands of us. And uh, um, I think that um, mm, it will be our, yeah, what we are doing is highly valuable because uh, currently we are uh, building the vision uh, for the future AI filmmaking. And based on our experiments, based on our uh, needs, um, some uh, some future companies, uh, some future engineers will build tools to cover our needs, to build uh, uh, a very convenient uh, portal to AI filmmaking. And I think that when we'll have these two components of uh, making uh, some objects to move in the way we like and when we'll have uh, interfaces for that convenient interfaces uh, it will be just huge immediately i think that people love it but still it's not widely yeah. adopted i think that technology is progressing much faster than then uh, um, the technology is being widely adopted by people because still even in my instagram when i show some of my works to my friends they are very very excited they are very surprised about the current possibilities when i come to give a talk on ai art to some contemporary art school there are there can be just three people out of 25 who know about Dali, who know about Midjourney, about stable diffusion. And they're shocked when I show them uh, what we can do now. And uh, 
I think, um, yeah, it, it, I'm not sure that, uh, I'm not sure that many people will still know about DALI, about uh, stable diffusion, when we we'll all already have a very convenient tools for AI filmmaking. So the process of adaptation, unfortunately, or maybe, uh, maybe fortunately, uh, is much slower than the process of uh, technology and progress. So yeah, I think it will be here, but we need to uh, uh, talk to people. We need to show uh, to people what can be done. And I think uh, what you're doing, Steve, is uh, uh, not uh, not less important than um, what people in, uh, for example, Facebook AI laboratory is doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, no, you obviously touched on a lot of points there. And some some great <laughs> information. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I, I I played around with the animation stuff and and literally got frustrated. Um, you know, yeah, how how can I move the camera? How can I get people to move and do things? And very quickly came up against these obstacles. It's like you can't instruct it to you know man reaches across and grabs a cup it's, it just doesn't it just can't string that sort of things together it's almost like somebody needs to because the ai the ai kind of knows what it's drawing because it's been told so it, it almost needs somebody to to bolt that together with some sort of physics engine some sort of ai physics engine and the physics engine just takes over and says okay this is this is this object and you know this and you know i'm guessing that's what google and meta are doing they've, they've, they've bolted some you know several things together and yeah and got it to to <laughs> yeah, to uh to do clever things i think i mean i've seen i've seen both of the examples from from meta and google i'd, I'd love to know how much computing power it took to generate those three through those short 3d movies and, and whether that's something that's actually going to be a barrier to a lot of people because i know Google changed the pricing on their servers the other week, which was a, a big upset for a lot of people. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that the tech is potentially going to, you know, prove a, a cost barrier to a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm I'm going to show some of your work shortly. Um, do you, do you want to? I'm going to show the the fairy tale one. You've obviously got a. a, a fairly deeply rooted love of your culture you know i can, I can feel that in your work do, do you want to talk yeah. about do you want to talk about the work i'm going to show the fairy tale one first uh, yeah 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 just show it and uh maybe i'll add something from me okay So yeah. there we go. That's, I mean, that's that's amazing. Um, you know, I have to say, um, <laughs> I, I wish yeah, I could generate you. something that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I understand that probably for uh, for uh, professional animators, uh, the, this animation wouldn't be a huge surprise, right? Because uh, uh well i think uh, you can manually create uh, this type of animation uh, i mean it's just amazing that you can do it now on uh, just in 24 hours and you can do for example uh, today you can do a fairy tale uh, about the guy who uh, ran into some uh, house uh, in a uh, winter forest and uh, stumbled upon uh, some uh, evil witch and um, but tomorrow you can create some uh, 
AI film uh, about skateboarders and their culture. And uh, on Wednesday, you can create something else. And uh, it's just very easy to experiment, to create completely new pieces out of it. And um, yeah, for me, it, it's just this piece is uh, a demonstration of uh, how you can use current AI animation tools to build stories, to sell uh, something to people. So you can see here at least some some plot. I mean, you you know, it's uh, it's something about a guy who walks uh, into a, a winter forest, uh, sees some house, then sees a witch. Uh, she disappears and then uh, appears. Uh, uh, behind his back, and uh, I mean, it's just the beginning, but it's an exciting beginning because you can create it very fast. And um, it was a first demonstration of my um, uh, 3D animation algorithm, uh, and uh, it allows you to. So when you are traveling uh, in this world. Uh, you you like you get the actual physical uh, 3d structure of this world when you're um, moving uh, between two trees these trees pass behind you uh, they are not just uh, uh, like stretch uh, infinitely as we've seen previously in 3d algorithms it's uh, a bit um, a bit different principle. And um, I'm not sure that many people are loving selling stories through AI. It's just what I, I love to do. Uh, I think that what we are having currently for 3D animation, um, when we are warping space, when we are uh, travel uh, through it, we are zooming in, it's just very great artistic um animations but uh i'd like to make something realistic with ai tools so uh, that was the reason why i uh, uh, started to develop this algorithm and i also uh, got very tired um, over this year from from the very shaky animations that we've had with disk diffusion uh, especially and with stable diffusion because uh, for example people with epilepsy can be really triggered by it and uh, it's very i got tired from these uh, kinds of videos so i'm really thinking a lot about how you can stabilize your animations to make them more consistent to make them look like a real wall so yeah that's basically everything that i wanted to say about this animation and yeah it's also uh, a slavic um, um, folk uh, fairy tale and i used uh, ivan bilibin who is uh, an uh, I would say one of the most prominent illustrators for um, children folk um, fairy tales uh, uh, in Russia. So yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, uh, probably that's uh, uh, that's what I love. That's what I try to express in my works. So uh, yeah, I, I already produced two two pieces uh, from my folk country, uh, from my folk uh, culture. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I love them. I love this one. And I've, I've seen the other one as well, and I love that one. The, the next piece we're going to look at, I think, was this one that you did commercially for somebody? Uh, yeah, I think this is, um, you're talking about the... Um, the one on Instagram? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's... Uh, it's a poster video for uh, for a digital art kids festival that were happening here in Baku, and uh, I was doing a four-day AI art workshop in the contemporary 
art museum here and uh, the guys um, uh, told me that they are having uh, a kids festival on digital art in a couple of weeks and they asked if uh, if uh, i can uh, produce something uh, um with uh, ai art and i told them sure and um the first experiments that i did i did with uh disc diffusion because it was exactly like the middle of uh, august maybe the end of august and uh it was it were the days when stable diffusion got introduced to the public uh so my first attempt was with disk diffusion and i spent almost like a week on that uh and didn't still um had what i had in mind uh, but when i tried to implement the same story plot with uh, the forum stable diffusion i was really shocked because uh, I implemented it in uh, in a couple of hours, and uh, uh, the level of visual expression, the level of uh, um, image coherency was like on another level from disk diffusion. So basically, in this um, Instagram post, you see there are three videos. So the first one is actually a combination of uh, uh the disk diffusion um video and the stable diffusion one and uh, um the second and the third videos are uh, disk diffusion and stable diffusion versions uh, separately so yeah we can take a look okay i'll take a look at that ah, before, it, sorry go on yeah yeah uh one thing to mention uh i've had um like a specific requirements for this video because uh, they told me that they they are having this kids festival and they are having some visual references that would be good to follow in my video and for me it was kind of a challenge because uh, okay we can create some very artistic uh, expressive visual pieces with uh, our tools but can we are actually participate in some production level um, projects? Can we uh, refer to some uh, visual references that are predefined, that are given in our generations? Because uh, currently what you are doing with AI tools is you are allowing to AI to uh to be creative in many ways to introduce uh, their own concepts but when you're having your predefined concepts it's very hard to make a deal with a neural network uh, to produce something that you are actually need so it was a challenge for me and uh, uh for example uh, uh, they're having as a mascot a blue robot blessed blue square robot uh in their festival so for me it was very important to introduce uh kids and robot uh, blue square robot in my video and you'll uh, you'll see it um, in my video okay just before we watch that so you're available for commissions if people wanted to contact you to, to do work is that um yes currently yes although um over the past week i've um, had a lot of uh, um, offers uh, but uh, i'm open for uh, for uh, for more work uh, currently uh, that's uh, that's how i make for a living so yeah i'd love to i'd love to talk i'd love to work on something so yeah please write me great okay right let's let's watch this video i, I love this one uh, <laughs> Right, <laughs> so yeah, an amazing uh, piece of piece of animation there. Um, 
I just yeah, I wish I could do something like that. The the final piece that that, that we're going to look at today, I think you've you've used um you've used the video and you know real real life video and animated that, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's my another interest uh, is uh, AI artistic st stylization of um, of the videos and uh, I think that uh, the toolbox um, uh, that we'll have in future will uh, need to have not only AI animation tools to create something from scratch but also to stylize video uh, because I think that that is a very promising uh, field of study and uh, especially until we'll have uh, um, a very good uh, text to video um, tools we'll we need to have uh, something to stylize video in order to introduce the kind of motion uh, that we need to have for example currently we can't make uh for example a person uh, to um, to hold a coffee in uh, his hands and drink it and uh, then put it on his table unless you are using an actual for example stock video with a person who is doing it and apply a style to it in order to combine it with uh, uh some other um some other uh, video clips uh, montage it and create a full uh, storyline around it um yeah so currently video stylization is uh, is very important i think and uh, i did uh, an experiment with uh, warp fusion it's um it's a collab uh uh, based on disk diffusion algorithm, but uh, it uses some computer vision techniques to stabil st stabilize uh, uh, animation that you are getting. And uh, yeah, I, I just love this project that I did uh, uh, on a mountain bike uh, video. Um, I just think that it's an interesting multi-stage process when you are combining a lot of different computer vision AI techniques in order to create a very consistent and production level results. So I applied um, different computer vision neural networks such as for optical flow, for uh, image and painting, for video segmentation, for video stylization, for uh, images generation so it's just um, a very interesting from the technological uh, point of view um, project yeah we can take a look yeah no okay let's have a look So there we are. are you i've got to ask are you the rider <laughs> uh no no unfortunately not uh maybe uh, i uh, uh sublimize this uh, um, because i really want to uh, to do mountain biking so <laughs> that's why i chose to make a stylization for a mountain biking video no it's not it's not my video it's uh it's a video by uh, 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 wait. What is his name? Uh, it's a uh, Remy Mitaile uh, video, and uh, it's a it's a very talented drone shot of his uh, um, forest ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can totally and, you can to totally see the the applications for for this sort of. You know, reworking of you know videos. Yeah, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have a video in my um, in my uh, Twitter post where I 
do uh, dig into the process of like how multiple uh, computer vision stages were combined in order to get this uh, kind of uh, yeah it's uh, it's this video uh, maybe we'll uh, uh, maybe you can uh, paste the link or we can uh, watch it also uh, because from my point of view future uh tools for video editing will need to um have all of these uh computer vision pipelines built into it yeah i think i'll, I'll post a i'll post a link and then people can obviously go connect with you on twitter yeah. as well uh look at look at your work um but that's one of the things that i love about about your work is there's a lot of people that are working in isolation and they're doing clever stuff and they're not talking about it you go online you tell people exactly what you're doing how you're doing it you're sharing your process and you know i, I love that you know i love that um that you're one of those people you know because the, these are the people in the community that are pushing the the pushing the the, the art form forward so rapidly because you know they'll go hey i've done this and somebody else goes oh that's really cool i'm going to do that and i'm going to add this to it and then somebody else goes oh but have you tried this and that cross fertilization of ideas is what's literally putting new stuff on my desk every day people are dropping links to me every day saying have you seen this have you seen that and it's just like i don't i don't have time to i don't have time to check them all out to be honest um but yeah i, I love that i love that sharing of ideas yeah, yeah. thank you uh, and uh actually i think that uh currently it's actually even more profitable when you're open because i'm not uh, getting more poor when i share how how i did uh, some piece because i create uh, uh, like a community of people uh, around me that are interested in it that are uh, that can build on top of my works on top of my processes and uh, um, show me uh, like how can you evolve how can you improve uh, uh, the work that you did uh, because well i think that we live uh, in an age where uh, when all of the information is accessible there is uh, no such thing as uh, unique information or unique skill set there is just nothing like it and um, i mean when i tell about it i am uh, not telling like something completely new to people i'm just sharing what is already available and i'm just uh, uh, getting uh, people's responses and i get a lot of energy from them and uh, it's much more valuable than uh, uh, keeping everything to myself and um, just being happy about it that you are in some unique position yeah no no it's amazing because it shows people what can be achieved and then it yeah um it's yeah it's it's inspired me you know and i'm, I'm really looking forward to you know trying to trying to get some better animations done using the, the techniques and the technology that that you're sharing so yeah it's been um it's been great talking to you it's been really uh really interesting hearing what you've got to say about the industry seeing your work um and just yeah getting to meet you um you know i love love meeting artists finding out what they're up to and um sharing it with with uh, with my viewers so th thanks very much for coming on giving us your time Dimitri. yeah thank you thank, yeah thank you and uh i really appreciate uh, the work that you are doing the channels that you've created and uh uh, the videos that you are doing uh, almost every day or maybe every day uh, I think that it's very very important and I hope that you'll uh, get um, the attention for your channels that you deserve that you highly deserve oh thank you it's very nice you to say it thanks a lot Dimitri all right take care thank Bye. you take care